So no, those that know me know I give high velocity talks, so uh, strap in and uh, brace yourselves. The moment of truth, waiting for the slides to start. <laughs> right, at, right after that, uh, here we go. So I want to tell you a story, a story that begins four and a half billion years ago with the creation of a planet called Earth. But a billion years go by until the first life starts showing up. A few more billion years go by until 50,000 years ago, the first modern humans begin walking around on this wonderful planet. Something very interesting happens about 38,000 years ago. The first surviving evidence of a first surviving permanent written record begins, cave drawings. Then about 8,000 years ago, the first surviving evidence of writing begins appearing. Uh, 550 years, uh, 550 years ago, uh, this guy named Johann Gutenberg creates this printing press, and people go crazy uh, creating a permanent written record of the world. And then about 20 years ago, the first graphical web browser shows up, uh, and people go, cr go crazy just creating this incredible, this incredible record of human society. Fast forward to today, and we've reached an incredible point in human history. 644 million websites, 150,000 new ones added every day, 156 million blogs, uh, and it's growing faster and faster. There are three times as many words posted to Twitter every single day as in the entire New York Times over the last half century. By some estimates, in just three years from now, Twitter will have had as many words posted to it as in all the books published over the last half millennia. Two and a half quintillion bytes of new data every day. Every week, the, equi the informational equivalent of all the words spoken by human beings since the dawn of the species transits the internet. Now pause for a moment to take this in. Nearly a third of the planet's population is connected to a single massive network that lets anyone reach anyone at any time. There are almost as many cell phones as people on planet Earth. Today, people from Bangladesh to Buenos Aires busily tell one another and their neighbors what they see, what they think, what they feel, what they're, what's important to them, offering unparalleled visibility into what global society is producing and paying attention to. Moreover, the constant background stream uh, that flows across these media platforms provides rich contextual background information on the narratives of each region and culture. Twitter alone gives us 400 million daily glimpses into human society, and YouTube adds 48 hours of new content every single minute. If ever we were at a point in human society where we could use all this information uh, to measure the, the heartbeat of global society, we are here. Citizens are becoming a vast, groundbreaking social sensor network, providing a continuous real-time picture of human society from every corner of the globe, while the news media is able to contextualize those thoughts into rich narratives that transcend traditional journalistic boundaries. The first confirmation of Gaddafi's capture was through a cell phone video shot at, a shot at the moment he was captured. In Syria, the Free Syrian Army uses a Facebook page, and the super secret takedown of Osama bin Laden was live tweeted by a Pakistani journalist, and then confirmed in the US by a former Pentagon official, well in advance of the formal White House acknowledgement. You think about wh what exactly all this means. Nearly half of all global news today is available through the web, meaning that we can access it instantly from every corner of the globe and process it with computers. It doesn't take a government with a billion dollar budget to monitor the globe anymore. Anyone with a, a laptop and, and Google News can do a, something of a job of, of trying to scoop up what's happening. We need to remember our past to understand how we got to the present, especially when looking at conflict. Every day, more and more data becomes available in digital format. Six petabytes of web archives, billions of pages of digitized material from the 19th century, we can visualize the geography of this. Here, all 80 million locations and 40 million dates were extracted from the English edition of Wikipedia to make a massive network capturing its view of global history over the last 200 years. Imagine applying this to all the field reports that all of the NGOs in this room have collected over their lifespans. We can do things like visualize global media tone towards a country, in essence, passively crowdsourcing global perceptions of that country for that critical threshold between late, when latent unrest transitions to physical violence uh, and take to the streets. And we can look at this, everything from positive, negative, to on out, to all kinds of dimensions. We can do this for leaders, too. When a dictator like Mubarak or Gaddafi might still believe themselves the leader of their country, we can explore the global pulse to understand when they've lost global credibility, uh, or when their support is beginning to erode, both within their country and across. We can do other interesting things, like, take, like plot the geographic affinity of a leader like bin Laden prior to his capture and get a 200-mile radius around the city he was ultimately captured in. We can take other uh, terrorist leaders that are uh, of great interest, 
obviously. Uh, make geographic affinity and find a lot of very interesting information. We can even zoom in and look at a gross scale view of a conflict and how it crisscrosses and diffuses and connects across the country. More importantly though, we can drill down to see how the various sides of a conflict are being portrayed, both globally and within particular countries and cultures. How are the Syrian rebels today being portrayed in Saudi media versus social media versus Chinese media? We can switch between the physical events of a war and the discourse around it, the rhetoric versus the reality of conflict. We can leverage massive computers then to bring these trillions of data points together, to visualize the dreams and fears of our global world in real time, to map conflict step by step as it happens, and to forecast the risk of future conflict. Uh, stop by my booth at the tech fair to, to see a glimpse into this. Thank you very much. Now for some